So for um, number 43, they want us to take the area bounded between these two curves and revolve it around the line x is equal to negative 1. Um, and so the first thing that we have to do is we have to figure out um, where these curves intersect so that we can set up the boundaries for our integral. Um, now, to do that, we first need to rewrite this equation right here so that we can isolate x. So this is equal to x. Um, x is equal to 1 plus y. These are equivalent, right? Um, and the reason that I isolated it is so now I can set these equal to each other because when they're equal, it will give us the point of intersection. So I'm going to go 1 plus y is equal to um, y minus 1 squared. And so I need to expand the right-hand side. So uh, 1 plus y is equal to y squared minus 2y plus 1. And now I'm just going to bring everything over to the right. So 0 is equal to y squared minus 3y. And now these 1s, they cancel out. And now we can factor. So 0 is equal to y times y minus 3. And so um, our solutions... Our solutions are y is equal to 0 and y is equal to 3. So we have two solutions right here. Um, and so our volume is going to be the integral from 0 to 3. Um, so let me just remove this so it doesn't get too crowded. Okay, so once we have our boundaries, um, let's think about what happens when we integrate. So when we integrate, um, we're going to be summing up these disks um, Actually, I'm going to draw a little bit higher that we're going to be summing up these disks here. And these disks, they touch the lower part. It touches the blue curve, right, that gets revolved. And the upper part touches the orange curve. And so this disk here, it has an area, right? This has, this has an area. Um, and this area, I'm going to have to shade it in. So let me shade that in. This area of this disk is given by the outer ring, or rather the outer disk, right? So maybe we're going to call this, um, we're going to call this, this has R1. We're going to call this pi R1 squared, because the area of any ring is just pi R squared. And then we are going to subtract from it the inner ring. So I'm going to erase that. And this radius still goes here. And then this this inner circle, it has a radius r2. So we're going pi r1, which is that outer circle, and then we're going minus pi r2 squared, because the area of any circle is pi r squared. Um, and so if we take the outer circle and we subtract from it the inner circle, we're going to be left with a ring, right? And this is a ring. Um, this ring here has an area as a function of y. And the reason that it is as a function of y is that you guys can clearly see here, um, if I move lower, well, my ring is going to be different, right? It's going to be a little bit thinner, like so. And so what we're doing is we're summing up all these areas. We're stacking them up vertically. So we're summing them up across the y-axis. Uh, let me just remove that. And so our integral here is going to be the sum of a, y, d, y. And once more, this a, y, it just represents the area of each ring. And then we're stacking them up vertically. Um, so let's figure out what r1 and what r2, what they are, so that we can, um, that we can set up this area. Well, um, r2, how do we get from the center here all the way out to r2? Well... The center is at minus 1, so I'm going to have to go minus 1 to 0, so that's a distance of 1, plus the distance from 0 all the way out to wherever it touches that orange curve, right? Um, so, for example, if I were down here, I would go minus 1 to 0, and then 0 to wherever it touches the curve. So, uh, we can see that the radius is just going to be 1 plus the value of the orange curve. So, R1 is going to be 1 plus the value of the orange so 1 plus 1 plus y, which is equal to um, 2 plus y. That's our r1. And let's see what r2 is. So r2, the smallest radius, it's going to go from, from negative 1 to 0, so still a distance of 1, and then plus wherever it touches that blue curve, right? Um, so if we were here, we, we would go, and maybe you should do that in a different color so you guys can see, we would go from negative 1 
to zero, so a distance of one, and then from zero to wherever it touches the blue curve. Um, so from this one, we can see that it is one plus the blue curve, so plus y minus one squared. Um, and let's just simplify this, so r2 is going to be one plus y squared minus two y plus one, and therefore r2 is going to be um, y squared minus two y plus two. So we have an expression for r2 and we have an expression for r1. Let's go put that in our formula. So we have that a y is equal to pi r1 squared minus pi r2 squared, which is equal to pi times r1, so that's gonna be two plus y squared, minus pi times r2 squared, so y squared um, minus two y plus two squared. Okay, um, we do have our expression for a y, but since we're integrating this, um, we wanna turn this into a polynomial, right? Or else it will be very hard for us to integrate. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're just going to expand it out. So that's gonna be pi times um, two plus y when we expand it, that gives us y squared plus four y plus four minus pi times, um, we're gonna have to expand this out. Let me just rewrite it here y squared minus two y plus two, and we're gonna have to expand that out. So I'm gonna go y times y squared, y to the power of four. Um, I'm going to start expanding it out like so. So that's gonna give us uh, minus two, minus two y cubed uh, plus two y squared, and then minus two y cubed, um, plus four y and then minus uh, plus four y and then four y squared, sorry, minus four y. And then lastly, so I went ahead and I distributed this middle one, right? To give us, let me just double check. Um, that should give us, oh, that's where the problem is. That should be cubed. Yeah, so minus two y cubed plus four y squared, um, minus four y, and then lastly, we're gonna distribute the two, so that goes like this. So plus two y squared, um, minus four y, um, plus four, okay. Oof, that was, that was quite a lot. Um, so let's simplify it, and then we will be ready to integrate. So that's gonna be um, y squared plus four y plus four, Four minus pi, and let's simplify this. So we're gonna collect like terms. Um, we only have a single to the power of four cubes. We have minus two minus two. So that's minus six y cubed. The squares we have two plus four plus two. So that's plus eight y squared. The single y's we have minus four minus four, minus eight y, and then plus four. Okay, and now we're ready to join everything. So that is equal to um, pi. I'm going to go y squared plus 4y plus 4, and then minus y to the power of 4, minus minus plus 6y cubed, minus 8y squared, uh, minus minus plus 8y, and then minus 4, which is equal to pi times, um, we're going to put the fourth first, so minus y to the power of 4, the cube plus 6y cubed, the squares, we're going to have 1, uh, minus eight, so that's minus seven y squared. The single ones, we're gonna have four plus eight, so plus 12 y, and then the number four minus four, that cancels out. Um, let me just check, let me just see if that is correct. Plus 12 y, yes, there's only, um, the cube is a little bit funny. Oh yeah, the cube should not be six, it should be four, because minus two minus two. So actually, um, let me going to erase that. The cube should be four, um, and that should be four right here. Four, okay. So once we have this, um, this is our a y, right? This is our um, area as a function of y. So we're gonna take this, we're going to copy it. We're going to copy, um, and we're going to, actually no, I'm just going to rewrite this. 
So our volume is going to be, uh, if you remember from zero to three of a y dy, so that's going to be the integral from zero to three, I'm gonna put pi outside because it's a constant, of minus y fourth plus four y cubed minus seven y squared plus two y, and all of this times dy. Um, so once we have this, we just need to take the antiderivative. So that's pi times minus y fifth over five uh, plus four y to the power of four over four minus seven y cubed over three plus 12y squared over two, and all of this from zero to three. Um, and all, all we have to do is evaluate it. So that's gonna be pi times, let's see, when we plug in three, uh, minus two, four, three, over five plus 81 uh, minus let's see that's going to be minus 63 and then plus 54 and then the zero we don't need to worry about it because everything goes to zero and so when we simplify it this is going to give us 117 pi over 5 and that's the volume that we get um, when we take this area right here and we revolve it around the line x is equal to negative 1.